In front of me, I have all the iPhone 14 models, the iPhone 14, the iPhone 14 Max, the iPhone 14 Pro, and the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and shout out to Sony Dixon for these. These are non-functional dummy units that are a one-to-one -one representation, dimension-wise, of the actual iPhone 14s. They're made for case manufacturers to be able to test their cases and see how they fit. So here I have the entire iPhone 13 lineup, so let's take a look and see what changes we get. Starting off with the iPhone 14, this is the one that's not really getting any major changes. We can see that the notch is still there, all the buttons are in the same position, the speaker grills are the same, the cameras look the same, the height is also the same. I've also measured the thickness with our caliper and it looks like the uh, iPhone 13 is 7.73 millimeters, while the iPhone 14 is actually 7.92, so it is a bit thicker, which could indicate that we are getting a larger battery. And I've also measured the diameter of the camera lenses and it seems like on the iPhone 13 we have about 13.79, 80 millimeters. Whereas on the iPhone 14, we actually have bigger modules. So 15.10 millimeters in diameter. So the camera modules are quite a bit bigger over the iPhone 13, indicating that we will be seeing an upgraded main camera module, something that has not been leaked or reported yet. Not only that, but the camera bump is significantly taller. So on the iPhone 13, it is uh, 2.40 millimeters compared to 3.5 on the iPhone 14. So then I was like, what camera module are we actually going to get inside the iPhone 14? So I measured the camera modules of the iPhone 13 Pro and guess what? They had the exact same diameter as the iPhone 14. Not only that, but it also had the exact same depth as the iPhone 14. Therefore, I'm fairly confident that the iPhone 14 will get the same main camera module as the iPhone 13 Pros. If you think about it, it kinda makes sense. The iPhone 12 Pro Max had a better sensor than the iPhone 12. Uh, when the iPhone 13s were introduced, the iPhone 13 mini and 13 both got the iPhone 12 Pro Max's sensor, while the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max got an even better sensor. And now, it looks like the 14 will be using the 13 Pro sensor, while the 14 Pros will be getting that that even better one. It does make sense for Apple to be reusing components in the non-pro models as this does keep the cost down. Next up we have the iPhone 14 Max, which as you probably all know by now, replaces the mini model. And just from the looks of it, it is identical to the iPhone 13 Pro Max in size. It's got the same 6.7 inch display as the 13 Pro Max, and it too is thicker at 7.9 millimeters compared to 7.7 uh, on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And it too has the same camera depth and camera size as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. The only difference being the lack of a telephoto module. And I honestly think that this is the iPhone 14 model that is going to sell the best. It's got the largest display that you can get on an iPhone, potentially an even better battery life than the iPhone 13 Pro Max, as it is now thicker, and uh, most importantly, a more affordable price point. Now, moving on to the Pro models, the iPhone 14 Pro is the one that I'm curious about the most, as this is the one that I will be getting. And the first thing that I immediately noticed is that this dummy unit actually has the pill plus hole cutout that we've seen leaked. I wasn't expecting them to put this in, as it doesn't really affect the dimensions for case manufacturers, but it is definitely interesting seeing it in person. And to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it. It's pretty big, and it also sits lower than the notch does, so it will cut in into your content more that way. But I guess that it would at least look more modern as the display would also go around it and above it, unlike the notch. However, if I align the 14 Pro with uh, the 13 Pro from the bottom, you can see that the 14 Pro is actually a bit taller than the 13 Pro is, something that we have seen leaked before, although this height increase is... <sighs> not as much as I expected in person. Now, because of this height increase, it seems like the volume buttons are a bit higher than on the 13 Pro, but the volume button is actually lower and also thicker. In fact, when I'm holding it in my hand, this is exactly where my thumb rests. The 14 Pro is also thicker than the 13 Pro at 7.9 millimeters compared to 7.7. 7.9 is exactly what we had on the regular 14 and the 14 Max. But the biggest change by far is the camera module on the back. Just take a look at how much bigger it is. If I put an iPhone 13 for comparison, you can see how insanely massive the new module is. And it is also much deeper at 4.3 millimeters compared to 3.5 one on the 13 Pro. It's pretty crazy to see how far we've come from the original iPhone's camera. Also, if we take the camera module into consideration, the 14 Pro is thicker 
than the first gen iPhone. This is because of that new 48 megapixel sensor, which will most certainly be a custom sensor developed specifically for Apple. For example, if I take this OnePlus 9 Pro, which also comes with a 48 megapixel sensor, in fact, it is the Sony IMX789, which the OnePlus 10 Pro also uses, and a ton of other Android manufacturers use the same sensor too. And you can see how much bigger the one on the iPhone is, and also how much deeper it goes. So it seems like it is indeed a new and custom sensor, one with much larger pixels than what we have on the market right now. This new sensor will also support 8K video, and if you want to see a more detailed video on the camera, make sure to check out our iPhone 14 leaks and rumors playlist. And lastly, we have the iPhone 14 Pro Max, which unlike the 14 Pro, this one has the exact same height as the 13 Pro Max. It's also got the same 7.9mm thickness that the rest of the iPhone 14s have, which means that compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, the 14 Pro Max should have an even better battery life. The power button has also been lowered compared to the iPhone 13 Pro Max, although not as much as on the regular 14 Pro. Not much else to say about the 14 Pro Max, as it has the same camera module as the 14 Pro, and everything else, aside from the size, is identical to the smaller 14 Pro. And I really like what Apple's doing here, the fact that they're offering us the same device, but in two different sizes. They're not just doing this with a 14 and 14 Pro, but also with the MacBooks. The 14 and 16 inch are pretty much the same device, just in different sizes. And even the new MacBook Air is rumored to come in a future 15 inch size. Now, aside from these dummy units, I also have some fresh iPhone 14 leaks to tell you about. Trendforce, which is a Taiwanese research firm, reported that all four iPhone 14 models will get six gigabytes of RAM. Previously, only the 13 Pros came with six. They also claimed that the 14 Pros will come with LPDDR5 memory, while the 14s will still come with the same LPDDR4X that the 14s came with. This isn't anything new, as Minchiko has already reported the exact same thing before. But the fact that we've heard it from a different source, in this case Trendforce, does give it a bit more credibility. Also, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but the new MacBook Air comes with LPDDR5 memory as well. Trendforce also reported that the 14 and the 14 Max will keep the same A15 chip as the 13s, while the 14 Pros will be getting the true A16. Once again, nothing new here, as both Mark Gurman and Ming Chukuo have reported this before, but the more we hear about it, the more likely it is that it will actually happen. There is something new in Trendforce's report though, which is that the A16 will be based on a smaller 4 nanometer process compared to 5. None of the previous reports said anything about the A16 going to 4 nanometers, but 3 nanometers is what was originally planned and rumored for the M2 chip, but now we know that it is still based on the same 5 nanometer process as the M1. And that the 3 nanometers is what we will likely get with the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips. If we do get 4 nanometers with the A16, this means that we might see an even bigger battery life improvement than just what we would normally get from that uh, slight thickness increase. Aside from this, code snippets have been found in iOS 16 that reference always on display support, although it is currently disabled. We've heard about this coming to the iPhone 14 Pros, and the new lock screen, to me at least, looks intentionally designed with always on in mind. The way the widgets look immediately screams always on to me. Interesting enough, in these code references, it seems like Apple engineers can also toggle always on display support on and off on non-iPhone 14 Pro devices, which means that they are currently testing always on for the iPhone 13 Pros too, which, as you all know, they can go to as low as 10 Hz. The iPhone 14 Pros are said to be able to go to as low as 1 Hz. So sure, the iPhone 14 Pros will be more power efficient when running the always-on display, but the 13 Pros are still technically able to do it. We'll have to see if Apple ends up bringing always-on functionality to the 13 Pros or not. Uh, I do hope so. Uh, but let me know in the comments, what do you guys think of the 14s? Do check out our brand new shorts channel, Zenop Tech Shorts, for some really quick and fun tech videos. Other than that, stay tuned for more iPhone 14 leaks and rumors episodes. I'm Daniel, this means Zenop Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenop Tech, signing out. Cheers. Yeah.